Now, most text critics and supporters of the modern versions based upon the critical text, most of these guys claim that no doctrines have been affected by the changes within modern versions or specifically, you know, conservative modern versions, you know, what they would call conservative modern versions like the NIV, the ESV, etc. But is this claim true? Now, um, Jack Mormon, he wrote a book about uh, 356 doctrinal changes um, when we depart from the Texas Receptus and we go with the critical text. And he doesn't conclude that these doctrines are completely missing. There are some doctrines that are completely missing, but he talks about doctrines specifically that have been weakened. And so we might go to our favorite verse on the deity of Christ, and we might go to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, and in the modern Bibles, it's simply not there. The, the deity of Christ isn't there. It says, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. But in the modern Bibles, it says, great, great is the mystery of godliness. He or who appeared in a body. And so um, we can see that doctrines are weakened and doctrines have been omitted and things like that. So George Van Smith was a Unitarian scholar sort of like the Jehovah's Witnesses. So they deny the teaching in the Bible of the Trinity. They deny the deity of Christ. Um, so he actually worked on the Revised Version Committee, which is what Westcott and Hort worked upon. Um, and so he actually wrote a book explaining that the new Revised Version readings favor Unitarian doctrines. So his book was entitled texts and margins of the Revised New Testament affecting theological doctrine br briefly reviewed. And so he's talking about the text and the marginal notes that affect theological doctrine. So, um, and if you read through that book, it's quite short. Uh, he's talking about how um, happy he is that certain verses have been changed to reflect Unitarian doctrines. So um, Hort had, had insisted that um, a Unitarian serve on the Revised uh, Version Committee of the New Testament. And this sparked a huge controversy at the time, which I won't go into here. Um, so the very people who worked on the Revised Version, um, which was the Bible perversion that opened the floodgates to many other modern corruptions, clearly said that the doctrine of the Trinity had been changed and the deity of Christ had been changed. So why do modern, modern version supporters keep saying no doctrines are changed when one of the key players in the Westcott and Hall Committee wrote a book saying that doctrines are changed? Um, and many clearly are. So it's, it's just um, an, another thing that critical text people, they keep parroting but they're not being honest with even with their own people, their own people earlier in the piece. In 1881, George Van Smith wrote this book and said doctrines are changed. And so I think, you know, having Roman Catholics, Mormons, atheists, liberals uh, working on the text is, is an absolute disaster. Um, and this text, the Greek text of Westcott and Hort, is the basis of all the modern Bibles today. And so, um, you know, when Bruce Metzger was asked, uh, he was asked, I think it was by Kirk DeVitro, uh, he asked him saying, you know, what text did you use? Or it might have been um, David Cloud actually. What text did you use initially? You know, how, how did you start your, your work on the Nestle Island United Bible Society text? And they said, well, we started off with the text of Westcott and Hort, and then we amended things from them. So this is the basis of the modern texts. And so um, what I find is, hypocritical is why don't people who support the critical text like James White, Stephen Boyce, Dan Wallace and these, these type of people, I, I can name many, many more. Why don't they expose Smith and his Unitarian beliefs? Why aren't they talking about this? Um, and for that matter, why don't they expose Carlo Martini, who was in line to be a Pope? He was one of the main architects behind the Nestle Alien United Bible Society text, or the liberal Bruce Metzger, or the Mormon who worked on the texts. 
they're not talking about these. Like they talk about Bart Ehrman, but he, just pretty much because he's become popular and he's left the faith and he's attacking the faith. But these other people, they're, they're not talking about, they're not saying, hey, these guys uh, have heretical things. We need to uh, expose these people. No, they're quite happy with having the text come from them. So it seems critical text proponents hold to a double standard. On one hand, they attack uh, Texas Receptus King James Version advocates um, who are mostly conservatives. But on the other hand, they allow these absolute heretics to work on their text and to make their Bible. And so this is one of the things where I've been in a recent discussion on Stephen Boyce's um, uh, Facebook page talking with Tommy Wasserman. Now, Tommy Wasserman's a smart guy. Uh, he's co-written a book with Jennifer Knust. And so they, they're they focused on the Prickapay Adulterae. Now, Jennifer Knust is a, a very staunch advocate for the LBGT uh, community. Um, she says that the Bible says n absolutely nothing about homosexuality. She's fine with it. And so uh, when you when you listen to Jennifer's material, it's basically like she doesn't really even believe the Bible has any moral relevance whatsoever to today, that it's actually a, a damaging book for people to read because of the patriarchy, patriarchal society. It um, demeans women. And so this, this book's been co-written. Tommy Wasserman and her have written the book. But even if you go through Tommy Wasserman's beliefs, he doesn't believe in hell. And he admitted that on a Bart Ehrman blog that I found. And so um, who are these people? And how come these are the go-to guys and they seem to be untouchable when it comes to critiques? Because people are trying to climb up certain ladders and they're you know, trying to be accepted by the academy. The problem is the academy is so rotten to the core that they have to overlook that there's you know, Jesuits there, they have to overlook that there's Mormons there, they have to overlook that there's just complete atheists there. <laughs> um, people like Bart Ehrman are still in the academy. They haven't been booted out or anything. They've, they've just started writing all these popular books and they're still doing a whole bunch of uh, work in the academy. And so this is just a huge double standard. And, and this is an amazing thing that critical text people, let, let me just pose this question to you and I want you to answer this. Why would you defend these people? Why aren't you exposing these people? Why would you spend your time uh, criticizing you know, King James people, Texas Receptors people, but you're not criticizing these people? 